Hi everyone, my name is Huynh. Today I would like to present our paper Defeating Smart and Reactive Zamas with Unlimited Power. My presentation today is divided into four parts. First, I will give some background information and the motivation that led us to this work. Then I will discuss about the system model and the channel model. Finally, I will highlight some simulation results. First, I would like to give uh, some background information of this work. In this paper, we aim to deal with zamming attack. So what is a zamming attack? As you can see in this figure, the zammer uh, attacks the channel by sending the interference to disrupt or even bring down the communication between the transmitter and the receiver. Currently, there are two main solutions to deal with zamming attack. The first solution is frequency hopping. The key idea of this technique is that the transmitter can switch to another channel if the zammer attacks the current channel. The second solution is rate adaptation. This technique allows the transmitter to reduce its transmission rate when the zammer attacks the channel. However, these solutions are not effective in dealing with reactive zammer that is considered in this paper. So what is reactive zammer? The reactive zammer is a zammer that can listen to the activity of the transmitter even when it is zamming the channel. And after that, the reactive zammer can adapt its attack strategy to maximize the disruption. To do that, the reactive zammer can use cell interference suppression or in-band full duplex technologies. Conventional solutions like frequency hopping and rate adaptation cannot effectively deal with this type of zammer. The reason is that a smart and reactive zammer with sufficient power budget can attack multiple channels at the same time with high power. Currently, some state-of-the-art solutions are proposed to address the limitations of conventional approach. The key idea of these solutions is that the transmitter can leverage the zamming signal by using energy harvesting and ambient backscatter technology. In particular, when the zammer attacks channel, the transmitter can harvest energy from the zamming signal or the transmitter can backscatter information right on the zamming signal. However, a smart and reactive zammer can stop attacking the channel if there is no active transmission from the transmitter. Therefore, these solutions are not applicable in dealing with reactive zammers. In this paper, we propose a novel idea to address this problem. In particular, we deploy a backscatter tag at the transmitter. When the zammer attacks the channel, the transmitter keeps transmitting to check the zammer and drain its power. At the same time, the tag will backscatter the real information to the receiver through the strong zamming signal and the signal sent from the transmitter. In this way, we can effectively deal with the reactive zammer. The more power the zammer used to attack the channel, the more data the transmitter can backscatter to the receiver. Here is the design of backscatter tag. To backscatter data to the receiver, the tag you and I have switched to switch between two loads Z1 and Z2. By doing this, the tag can shift between absorbing and reflecting states. The absorbing state represents bit 0 and the reflecting state represents bit 1. Several prototypes have been proposed in the literature. It is reported that the data rate of ambient backscatter can be up to few megabit per second and the communication range can be up to 100 meters. This makes ambient backscatter a very promising solution in dealing with reactive zammers. This is our system model. In this paper, we consider a wireless system in which the transmitter wants to transmit information to the receiver. And the smart and reactive zammer aim to disrupt this communication. We assume that the zammer has unlimited power budget. And at the transmitter, we deploy a batch scatter tag. This tag can 
send information to the receiver by by scattering the jamming signal from the jammer and also the stack can by scatter the active signal from the transmitter. However, by scattering from multiple IF sorts may lead to high bit error rates. To address this problem, we propose to use multiple antenna at the receiver. In this way, uh, the receiver can improve the um, communication performance. Now I will give some information about the channel model. In ambient byte scatter in communication, the tag should byte scatter information at a lower rate than the IF short signal to make sure that the receiver can properly decode the byte scatter signal. As such, we assume that each byte scatter symbol span over an IF short symbol. And also in the paper, the receiver is equipped with M antennas. And the receive signal at the receiver consists of three components. The first component is a direct link signal that is directly transmitted from the transmitter to the receiver. And the second component is a direct link signal that is directly transmitted from the jammer to the receiver. And the last component is a byte scatter signal from the tag to the receiver. The receive signal at the receiver can be expressed as so in this slide. The first two parts are the direct link from the transmitter and from the jammer to the receiver. These two parts are the byte scatter links. One is from the transmitter to tag and then from tag to the receiver. And the other is from the jammer to the tag and then from the tag to the receiver. FRM, FAM, and FBM are the small scale fading from the transmitter, the jammer, and the tag to the receiver. LR and LA are the small scale fading from the transmitter to the tag and then from the jammer to the tag, respectively. SRN and SAN are the IF signal trans transmitted from the transmitter and from the jammer. Alpha DT and, and Alpha DA are the signal to noise ratio of the direct link from the transmitter and from the jammer to the uh, receiver. And Alpha BT and Alpha BA are the signal to noise ratios of the byte scatter link. And C is a byte scatter state. C equal to zero when byte scattering beats zero. C equal to one when byte scatter, by scattering beats one. For signal detection at the receiver, we use maximum likelihood detector. So here are the conditions to detect bit zero and bit one at the receiver. In, in this condition, K0 and K1 are the statistical covariant matrix. Beyond these two conditions, the receiver can uh, detect bit 0 and bit 1 from the byte scatter signal received at the receiver. Now I will talk about the performance evaluation. In figure A, we vary the signal to noise ratio of the direct link from the jammer to the receiver and observe the bit error rate as can be seen in this figure with higher signal to noise ratio the tag can achieve lower bit error rates in other words when the jammer attack the channel with higher power the tag can by scatter information with lower bit error rates similarly in figure b we vary the signal to noise ratio of the by scatter link from the jammer to the tag and then from the tag to the receiver. Clearly, when the jamming signal of the tag are stronger, the tag can batch scatter information with lower bit error rates. In both cases, a higher number of antenna as a receiver leads to better communication performance. From these two figures, we can observe that the more power the jammer used to attack the channel, the lower bit error rate we can achieve, 
and the more data the tag can backscatter to the receiver. Next, we vary the number of IF short symbol per each backscatter symbol and observe the bit error rate. As you can see in this figure, when n increase, the bit error rate decrease. The reason is that with lower backscatter rate, the receiver can decode the backscatter signal more easily. Again, with higher number of antenna as the receiver, we can achieve a lower bit error rate. From this figure, we can observe that when we design the system, we need to consider the trade-off between the backscatter rate and the value of n. With higher value of n, the bit error rate performance is better, but the backscatter rate is lower. This is the end of my presentation today. Thank you for the attention. Now it's time for question and answer.